Yeah, but it, it's just we can just cut the bass. <laughs> <laughs> but we can do it if you like it. And now we have Cedric Fermont who will be doing a talk during our festival. Would that be possible to turn the music off? Indeed. Hello, everyone. Hi, hello. Yeah, Cedric, you, you were just telling us about uh, where you were born and because we're both a little bit Belgian. I mean, I'm fully Belgian, actually. I feel a bit ashamed for that, but... <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> you know, if... But uh, well, well if, if people want to know... Yeah, officially I'm a Belgian because I've got a Belgian passport, basically. That but makes was, you a uh, pure Belgian, yeah. I was born in um, the DRC, so the Congo, but when it was still called Zaire back yeah, then. Yeah. Um, and so I'm of uh, Congolese, Greek, Belgian descent. Apparently, my family name might come from Germany, but there are a lot of uh, Fermont, we say in French, or ferment in the Netherlands and Belgium, in fact, and, and some in Germany as well. It's pretty rare, but there is a, a company with big trucks with uh, yeah. that name written on it. Yeah, S here so my name is Louis, so <laughs> the, there's all kind of companies doing things with that <laughs> name. Some of them I don't support. Huh? I don't agree with every time you see Louis. I don't. I don't always agree. Yeah. Uh, well, and uh, well, I live in in uh, Berlin for um, twelve years now, more or less, a tiny bit more even. Uh, yeah, mostly lived in Belgium. I lived in a bit in the Netherlands, and uh, I've got an obsession for uh, a very long time since the nineteen nineties. It's um, mm, so-called non-Western uh, music, but in the field of experimental and yeah. noise and industrial and uh, electronic uh, and a tiny bit other things like uh, sometimes um, hip hop and metal and punk or whatsoever. So I travel a lot in many parts of uh, Asia. I mean, from west to east, southeast and so on, and also uh, in Africa and across Europe quite a lot, and, and soon in Latin America for the first time, which is also in a region I find interesting, but I never got the opportunity or never made the step to, to go there in the end. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm doing an ongoing research. I'm publishing music from Africa, Asia, a bit Latin America as well. Yeah, I remember when we we actually briefly met a few years ago at uh, Hassan Kass concert, who's a good friend. And I remember you telling me, ah, yeah, in Tanzania there are three people playing noise music. And uh, oh, yeah, in Kenya there are like, you seem like to be the encyclopedia of <laughs> African <laughs> experimental and, and noise music, which not that many people talk at all. Uh, especially back then, probably no more than, than it used to be. But It has changed now, fortunately. Um, Partly thanks to people like uh, Niege Niege and yeah, yeah, um, Hakuna Kulala, which is connected. Not only thanks to them, there are other um, networks, sometimes older, but depending on the on the um, region. Like, um, especially in the past, there was uh, 100 copies run by Mahmoud Refat in Cairo, and he published a lot of uh, music from Egypt in the past. He still does, but in a very, very different genre now. But he used to publish drone and experimental, modern classical, ambient, and so on. And he, he even published a compilation with um, women only from Cairo doing electroacoustic music concrete and experimental music. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm a bit uh, an encyclopedia, people say. <laughs> uh, I have a good memory. <laughs> and as, man as I mentioned, I travel a lot, so yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm interested uh, because like uh, when I listen, to, for example, to people in their 20s, and if they play something which has some sort of 80s resonance, very often I can hear they hear those things differently than I do. And I guess, like, regarding experimental music in Africa or in Asia, the relationship with the material that is proposed, if, even if sometimes they may, ha may have some similarities with things we know in Europe, the perception of it or the meaning of it may be completely different when you're traveling. It can be. It depends on the people, the region, the culture. 
uh, the history also of the place. Um, if we speak about Japan, for example, it has such an old history of uh, contemporary music, wh whether it is Japanese contemporary or, or um, uh, Western contemporary music. Um, so even though, of course, the perception might be different there, it's not so much um, different from from uh, the music here, that is made uh, here. For example, uh, not always, not systematically, but th there are a lot of uh, a lot of connections. But if we speak about some of the regions, especially if we speak about improvised music, it can be very different because what is improvised music? It's not only Western free improv, free jazz, whatever. It can be anything else. Um, so you've got people developing their own uh, path um, regarding experimental music, improvised music, or um, people using their own background. So, I mean, um, doing electronic or experimental music or even metal, but uh, not using the Western scale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you, you may have some uh, metal bands in Iran, but tuning their instruments according to um, Persian scale or um, a break core band in Indonesia um, blending break core and uh, gamelan, for example. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a romanticized thing, but like, for example, the example of Japan, like, I remember the, the Osaka noise thing from the 80s. It's just a story I, I heard, I'm not 100% sure it's true, but the story I heard is it was much more extreme than the, 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 the okay. equivalent one from, yeah. Because they heard about it without listening to it, and then they imagine a music which would be far more violent than what we were, um, I mean, not us, but like people doing noise, were doing. But I also think like the relationship with violence, for example, was really different uh, probably than the one we have here. So although there are similarities, the perception of it, that's what I, w I wanted to say. And I guess like from going from a country to another and targeting people who have connections with the music you, you, you grow up with maybe, or the music you, you discover, you, you find those differences I find them. I mean, the, the Osaka Tokyo thing is a well-known example. I mean, you ha you had bands like Hicho Kaidan, for example, yeah. uh, and then uh, other bands uh, in Tokyo, and th the way they would make noise music was different. Also, the instruments, like Hicho Kaidan, would use uh, guitars, for example. Yeah. While some other artists um, in Tokyo would use um, electronics or uh, pedals and metal junk and lots of distortion and so on or, or voice um, but yes yeah, you think you the, the way people express themselves and perceive things um, may be very different and uh, if so-called Japanese music some people say Japanese doesn't exist it's just a, a Western term which is probably true <laughs> um, but nevertheless y y you can feel that a lot of Japanese artists not only into noise music um, have developed their own uh, interpretations of uh, music from elsewhere, especially from the West. And as uh, also, if you listen to bands like Melt Banana, which is some kind of, I don't know, punk, art punk music, it's pretty unique, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and it's very often with lots of Japanese artists, I think, in, in the field of alternative music. Um, and this is something you, you can see more and more in uh, other countries as well. Um, sometimes it takes time uh, for people to digest everything and reinterpret um, something, but you, you've got a lot of new music genres emerging or well established sometimes in uh, outside of the West for sure. You've got electro cumbia in uh, Argentina and some of the parts of Latin America. You've got Singeli in Tanzania and Com in South Africa, Onkyoke in Japan and some of the parts of Asia like China and uh, Malaysia and so on, which I find very, very interesting. And these developments depend on their own uh, musical and artistic culture, but also the environment sometimes. Uh, um, if we speak about Onkyoke, for example, it's very minimalistic, very quiet, but it's partly due to the fact that people could not make a lot of noise because of the, the high concentration of uh, 
population in yeah. in a neighborhood in Japan, and the the, the walls that are very thin. <laughs> um, so it's very interesting to see that um, we live in a global world where a lot of people do the same thing in the end and eat the same thing more or less and buy the same cloth and so on. But you can always find little uh, differences, which I find fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's true. It's uh, the one of the things that depressed me when the first time I went to Asia, finding like a lot of things I hated in Europe back there. And of course, you find also other things, but it's it's really painful, no, to see that. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah. Uh, well, it's. Um, I mean, it's the globalization. Unfortunately, yeah. it's it's like this, and especially when it's connected to the the capital. So, uh, well, are we maybe I don't know where you went in in, in Asia, but uh, Carrefour, this uh, French um, store, you find them in in France, in Belgium, in Spain, but you find them in Indonesia and yeah. Singapore and China, and uh, DM, this um, German store, um, you find it almost everywhere in Eastern Europe since the war uh, collapsed. But um, I saw a, a DM in uh, Iraq in. Uh, in Iraqi Kurdistan, the north of Iraq. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, I went to a Carrefour in Bangkok, Amos, but uh, but because a friend, a Thai, uh. Thai friend of mine, brought me there to, mm. to buy things. Uh, you've got Deleuze in uh, Indonesia. It's called oh Indo, no. but the logo is the same, and the products are coming from Belgium. Yeah. So it's terrible. Yeah. I mean, it's the same with H and M and yeah, uh, yeah. what not. Would you like to play us a track and yeah, and uh, sure. and uh. tell us a little bit about this? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to play one piece, which is a bit short. Um, it's uh, about two minutes and thirty seconds. Uh, it's it's a piece by Mash. She's an artist from uh, Tunis, uh, in Tunisia, and um, the piece is called Sun Wave. It's taken from a compilation called Alternative African Reality, Electronic, Electroacoustic, and Experimental Music from Africa and the Diaspora. It's a compilation I published um, a few years ago. And I need to check because I forgot. I uh, in 2020, or almost three years ago, um, with um, 32 artists and bands from um, Africa and the, the diaspora, because I wanted to see the to show the diversity of music over there. So the, there is a bit of everything, like industrial hip hop and singeli and noise and free improvised music and electronica, ambient, and so on. Because a lot of people have in mind that Africa is very traditional and people only publish traditional music and maybe hip hop and a tiny bit of metal, whatever. But there is so much more than that in, in Africa, like it everywhere, basically. And um, so I wanted to show what's going on there, or partly, of course, I mean, this compilation doesn't show everything. So uh, we start with MASH from uh, Tunis.
So for those who just um, joined us, it was Mash. She's from Tunis and does some ambient electronic music. She also is influenced oh, by so like oh sorry yeah there is another one playing now <laughs> in the background <laughs> as a background music yeah um, so yeah she's into ambient and a bit industrial music and so on and na now in the background it's uh, Po. She's from uh, France and um, and 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 Ghana. Uh, the piece is called uh, Lado, so it's taken from the same compilation. In fact, um, yeah, we can listen to that one, and, sure. then, uh, <laughs> and then we stop and speak. So that was um, Po from uh, Ghana and uh, France, um, a piece taken from alternate African reality, electronic, electroacoustic, and experimental music from Africa and Asia. It's a CD I published almost three years ago. That also is um, that is also available on um, Bandcamp, in fact, and that includes uh, 32 artists from. Um, Africa and the diaspora, and I try to get as many regions and countries as I could. Um, um, so th there are people from North Africa, uh, all countries except uh, Libya, uh, a lot from um, East Africa also, like um, Somalia, Ethiopia, um, Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania, um, Uganda, um, and people from uh, Southern Africa, Mozambique, Eswatini, um, Lesotho, um, South Africa, um, Zimbabwe, and then a tiny bit from the west, uh, so um, Ghana um, and um, Senegal, Nigeria, Cameroon, 
uh, but not too many. I had a harder time to find this kind of music from uh, West Africa, I must oh say, yeah. which is also a part of where I've never been to also. But even when I ask people I know there, they tell me they don't know so many people into this uh, alternative scene in that part of Africa. Yeah, th that was uh, m my next question. Is there many connections between musicians from different countries in, in Africa? Or did you start mm. to be like, mm. to act as person connecting I think musician? it's both. Uh, like North Africa is very well connected yeah, yeah. because of the language, the culture that is kind of more or less similar. Um, of religion, language, everything. So you've got um, lots of connections between Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, Egypt, and also Europe because it's next door and there is a, a huge um, North African population also in Europe and together with the Middle East uh, mm -hmm. or West Asia, like more and more people say, um, especially with countries like Jordan and Palestine and the... Uh, Liban, uh, yeah, Lebanon, uh, where Syria in the past, but I mean, it's a bit less now because of the war and, and somehow Iran, even though it's not an Arabic country, but um, there are connections also uh, for sure. Yeah, but then in, in East Africa, it's a lot thanks to Nyege uh, Nyege, Hakuna Kulala, but also a bit to um, um, East Africa, uh, East African Records, uh, which is a, another label based in Uganda, uh, more into dub and uh, more um, popish music, but uh, they publish also alternative things in, in the field of electronics. Um, and um, then it's, it's kind of lose the, the rest, but it's changing, partly thanks to Nege Nege because they try to really um, kind of globalize <laughs> Africa somehow. Um, but also thanks to uh, publications like that CD I published, but I'm not the only one who uh, publishes compilations like this. Um, so artists are more and more connected and I always make my best to put them in touch and uh, exchange addresses and contacts and so on. Um, but in some places it's still kind of loose, unfortunately, especially in, in the West, as I mentioned. Uh, um, and in Congo, where you were born, what yeah, was the there scene are things. There? In fact, uh, I did not mention it. That's true. I mean, th th there is a, a Ray Sapiens from the DRC is also on that compilation, and myself as well. Um, there are many things happening, emerging from the Congo and from the diaspora, not only living in, in Europe but also living in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a lot of Congolese people living in uh, Uganda or Tanzania. Uh, especially people coming from uh, the Goma region, which is at war for uh, more than 20 years yeah. now, so it's safer for them to be somewhere else. And, uh, and so Nyege Nyege is... is uh, yeah, you know, sure, they, they always invite a lot of Congolese yeah. artists, like uh, Ray played at Nyege Nyege, and he's not uh, the only one. There have been a lot of Congolese um, rappers and uh, uh, traditional musicians also, electronic musicians performing at uh, Nyege Nyege and publishing. I mean, uh, Ray Sapiens published um, one or two releases on um, Hakuna Kulala, the sub-label yeah, of yeah. Uh, Nyege Nyege tapes. And, uh, and in Kinshasa, is there, is there clubs of for electronic well, music, experimental music? And I've never been back to uh, the DRC, I must say. Uh, there, are, there are no clubs to that, that are specialized into like experimental music or whatever. So it's more people but working on their on their place and sharing it on the yeah, internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's difficult regarding... Uh, Live music. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially when it's amplified music. Hence, yeah. you have bands like um, uh, Konono, number one. Yeah, yeah of course. You yeah. know, they, they self-amplify their um, um, uh, kalimbas. Yeah, yeah uh, with their amps, yeah. Voices and so on, because, you know, elec the electric grid is not reliable in, in the DRC, so it's better to... Um, to, 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 to set up everything by yourself. Um, I, I know in the past there have been a few festivals, I mean, even more recently. I know Ray played before the COVID, so three, four years ago, um, at a festival in uh, Ngoma, which is normally not especially dedicated to music only, but he performed there and he plays like elect electronic music, clearly. Um, so there are things happening for sure. It's not because 
the country is poor or at war or whatever that nothing happens but it comes with a lot of uh, difficulties yeah yeah of course would you would you play us uh, another track uh, all right yeah we can play um so ju oh just before before you play this um can you maybe introduce us to what you will be talking about during the the festival like the main topic and the yeah sure that's wrong <laughs> we have to do that and meanwhile i'm going to um switch to another compilation also um I, i'm going to play something from another compilation i published uh, also a few years ago um so i'm going to well, speak a bit about my um, research and uh, the networks that are being developed into uh, in, in, in this field of music in Asia, Africa, and somehow the so-called uh, Global South, um, which is a wrong term because uh, New Zealand and uh, Australia are also in the South <laughs> at some point, <laughs> and they are often not included in, into this. Um, so um, the de developments and... Um, what, what's going on and uh, also I'm going to speak a tiny bit about the uh, the, the past because I'm, I'm, I'm doing this uh, ongoing research about um, electronic and so-called experimental music um, from Asia and Africa um, and it's not a new story so I want to speak uh, about that also there were composers in in 1944 in Egypt uh, Halim al Dab made some uh, music concrete, but there, there were composers in the 50s and over 60s onwards uh, in Iran and in Indonesia, in um, uh, Japan, of course, South Korea, uh, in Cuba, in Argentina, in South Africa, and so on and so forth. And you, you rarely find them mentioned in the books, apart from a very, very few uh, kind of famous ones. It's changing, but yeah, globally, I'm going to speak about uh, this um, and a bit more, maybe, depending on the time I will have. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I said I would switch to another compilation. Um, so before that, um, uh, alternate African reality, this um, African compilation, I published another one, I mean, several other ones, but uh, a major one was uh, Uchronia, which is music from um, Asia, a tiny bit the diaspora, but not so much. Um, so um, it's, uh, I can't remember how many countries that time, but it's more than uh, 30, it must be, uh, yeah, 32 Asian countries and the diaspora. So um, you've got artists from uh, Iraqi Kurdistan, from uh, uh, Lebanon, from Kuwait, from uh, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, um, Sri Lanka, India, um, China, Macau, Taiwan, uh, Myanmar, and what not in the field of uh, electroacoustic, experimental music, concrete, and free improvised music, and dark ambient, and other things. So it's absolutely not um, dance oriented, uh, unless you you like to dance on some experimental music, of course. Um, and. Um <laughs> Um, so just with the, the other compilation, Alternate African Reality, I wanted also to have a lot, a lot of diversity in the music genres and the geographic uh, places, uh, but also um, uh, lots of women uh, on the African compilation also, because lots of people told me in the past few years that I would never find any woman in, say, Indonesia or Iraq whatsoever who does free improvised music or electroacoustic music, which is absolutely wrong. I know many, uh, and I've met a lot over there anyway. Um, and so um, we can maybe play a piece by uh, Kei Watanabe. She uh, is from Japan and Sri Lanka, but mostly lived in Sri Lanka. And she lived in Berlin for uh, uh, two, three years, four years now. It was before the COVID, yeah. Um, so the piece is called uh, We've Forgotten How to Breathe. And what she does is a bit like ambient, folkish, improvised music with the loopers and, and so on. I really, I find that really lovely. I really like this piece a lot. Um, so yeah, let's go for this one and then I will play another piece from somewhere else.
So that was Kei Watanabe from Sri Lanka and um, um, Japan. Do you mind if we speak a little bit about what we were talking together? Oh, sure, we can, public? of uh, course. Like to talking about you touring in Africa and organizing your tours already back in, in the early 2000s. Well, Africa was a bit later. Uh, uh, ah, okay, you started uh, with Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First in 2003 in Turkey and then uh, uh, 2004 in Thailand and Laos. But Laos, I did not manage to play back then. I played a few months later. Later in 2005, I made a six-month tour across uh, Singapore, China, South Korea, uh, Laos, Vietnam, and so on. Um, and Africa was a bit later. I can't really remember exactly. Around 2006, uh, seven, something like this. But it was Morocco first, and then during the the time of the revolution, <laughs> the Arab Spring in Tunisia and Algeria. Um, so we traveled by train uh, between both countries, which was not um, the brightest idea <laughs> ever, but we survived. <laughs> but uh, like you would stay uh, every time in a city like for a few weeks or things like that, or you would... Well, it was not a, a real tour. We, we, we stayed in Algiers. Um, we were hosted by a local punk band called uh, Demokratia. Khra in Arabic means shit. Wow. <laughs> And um, there was a festival um, organized by uh, um, Mula Reda, who is also on this African compilation, and other compilations I published in the past from 2007. Um, he's uh, one of the very few, or only, I don't know, noise musicians from uh, Algeria. He organized a very nice festival where there was a bit of everything, brick, core, techno, uh, punk, yeah. hardcore, um, and noise music. But and everything w that was representing counterculture or subculture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there were a few artists from Algeria because there is not, or there was not so much happening back then, except maybe for metal and punk music. And we were two Belgians to be there. And then we went to Tunisia, um, to Tunis, um, to perform as well. Uh, there was an event like electronic and core, lots of local artists, um, some exhibition also. Um, my, my real first tour in, in Africa was uh, uh, four, four or five years ago, I can't remember exactly. Um, so I was two months, um, starting with Egypt and finishing with um, uh, Mozambique somehow, so going to South Africa, to Eswatini, to um, um, Zim, uh, Zambia, uh, Ethiopia, uh, Uganda, Kenya, um, and Namibia. But I did not manage to play everywhere that time, not in Ethiopia, not in Namibia, and not in Mozambique, unfortunately. Um, but it was interesting to meet people and see what's going on. And uh, it was half an adventure because m it was my first big tour there. In fact, and since then, I've been back a few times. Um, and it was much easier to organize and, and perform, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and how how would you, like, organize this tour? Like, would you, would that be, you would plan things in advance or you would be there or in between or? Well, usually I plan things in advance, but, uh, well, you know, with Africa, there can always be some <laughs> <laughs> surprises. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's not always easy. Um, even though it again, it's really improving a lot. There, there are kind of good networks nowadays. Uh, but in the, in, in the very distant pa past, um, the first time I made this big tour in, in, in Asia in 2005, and I made another six-month tour much later in, in across Asia, starting with Lebanon and finishing uh, with uh, South Korea and many countries in between, like... Uh, was in Turkey, was in India, Bangladesh, was in Myanmar and uh, China and the Philippines and so on. It was partly improvisation because I was trying to connect as many dots as possible. And mm -hmm. in some countries, I didn't have so many contacts, in fact. So I would just think, okay, I'll just go and see what happens. Like with uh, Myanmar, for example, 
during my tour, I was still looking for what's going on in Myanmar. I knew there was a punk scene and a hip hop scene, and I thought there must be some experimental music related things uh, because there, there is that exists everywhere in Southeast Asia, except maybe in Laos. I never managed to find anything, and in uh, Timor Leste. Uh, Brunei Darussalam, I suspect there might be things, but um, apart from some uh, dungeon themes, I never <laughs> managed to find anything. But nevertheless, and on my way, uh, I was just typing key words on a search engine, like uh, Myanmar experimental music, Myanmar yeah. noise music. And the art and scene, I guess, helps every exactly. time there is a gallery or something. Yeah, like. and in the end, I typed uh, Yangon experimental music concert, and I found a video and I contacted the people and uh, they organized a kind of mini festival for free improvised music and uh, noise and experimental, everything free for the people to attend. And I also contacted the um, French Institute, l'Institut Francais, yeah, yeah. Uh, that helped me also to set up a gig with um, a musician called uh, Kodou, uh, who plays traditional music but who likes to twist it. A very interesting person. Um, but yeah, to go back to Africa, I tried as much as possible to to organize in advance, but in some places like Zambia, for example, I could not really get any answer. Yeah, so you just go into the city and, and Yeah, and I, I had a contact there, um, a, a Japanese friend who could host me, and I thought, okay, uh, I could take a, a, a flight from um, Uganda to Zambia, and I thought, okay, let's try it. And mm -hmm. Because many times I, I bumped on someone during a travel. The first time I've been to um, um, Thailand in 2004, the organizer told me, hey, um, uh, I know somebody in, Hano in Ho Chi Minh City who could introduce you to people from the scene. And uh, I wrote the person and he told me, yeah, I know people in Hanoi and I played in Hanoi. Uh, that still happens sometimes, which yeah. is fantastic, I think that you meet somebody randomly or, or not and this person points you to uh, other people who could book you somewhere else uh, yeah and like last like time when i was in mozambique and there was a guy in the street i crossed him in maputo and and i thought mm, this guy has something special a bit apart from other I people just so uh, f how it looks yeah, like yeah, yeah 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 and then i met him again a few days later and we smiled at each other and we spoke he was a metal head yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like gosh yeah, <laughs> yeah it's funny because it really re I, I mean i was talking about that to you uh, earlier on like my friend Mathieu ha which you also know who was touring also in asia from early 2000s would organize his tour like this just like this going somewhere and meeting people and just looking at how people look and catch them and get a gig somewhere and then another city would open, et cetera, et cetera. And he would go back every year in order to make it grow. No, definitely it's, it's important to really keep in touch and try to uh, also invite people here if, if yeah, when yeah. it's possible, which I also do uh, as much as I can in fact. Do you also give lectures uh, when you go to Africa, for example? Yeah, I did in um, at a university in uh, Johannesburg uh, and for a radio show in Cape Town as well. In Morocco, the first time I was there, also in a, in a secondary school, uh, mm -hmm. lycée, we, we say in, in French. Um, uh, yeah, in, um, the at the Museum of Modern Art in uh, Algiers also, and in Alexandria and in Art Gallery. Yeah, for sure. I always... Yeah, yeah. Do but uh, yeah. what are those lectures about then? About your uh, label? So it's about um, your no, no, it's yeah. yeah, a tiny bit, but it's mostly my uh, research and uh, I'm also speaking about the fact that it's important to uh, not only look um, at what uh, the West does, but also look at the surroundings because yeah. I realized more than once that I would speak to an audience in whatever African or Asian country that is aware of uh, who uh, John Cage is, or um, Karl Heinz uh, Stockhausen, uh, or um, Apex Twin, and so on. Yeah. But they know so little about what their uh, their own continent. Yeah, yeah. which is a bit sad. I mean, fair enough. Nice that they know what happens 
in the West, but it's very important also to know what happens in around you because there is a lot happening, in fact. Um, and again, I think it's really improving that more and more people are aware of this. And, and when I go there, there are also, of course, people who know much more than me about their uh, places and who tell me about what they know from from the present and the past. And thanks to friends over there, uh, I heard fantastic uh, electronic music pioneers uh, of electronic music uh, from some of those regions like Nigeria or um, South Africa, many places. Yeah. yeah, I guess the club music must be also very strong. Like, I mean, Nyege Nyege, the n most of the things I know are, are like powerful mix of all kind of things because there's also these contemporary art things mixed with this electronic music and al also all those African things. Yeah, uh, I mean, Nyege Nyege is, is really an exception and uh -huh. Uganda as well. I, I still don't oh know yeah. why there is so much electronic music in Uganda. Maybe partly because it's a kind of um, a cross point. Uh, you have a lot of people from uh, countries around that moved, who moved to um, especially Kampala. So uh, there I met people from South Sudan, from Ethiopia, from the DRC, from um, Somalia, from Kenya even, who moved there. Um, so there's a, a great mix of culture, uh, but there must be uh, other reasons why there is so much happening there, but I don't know the answer. And the diversity of Nyege Nyege is huge. I mean, you've got uh, reggae, hip hop, uh, Bugandan traditional music, uh, noise and breakcore and acid and punk and metal and so on and so forth. Um, and yes, there is a lot of dance music in, in, in many parts of Africa, for sure. All sorts of dance music from hip hop to EDM to Afro house to uh, Kwaito to techno and industrial breakcore, whatever. Uh, and I must say, I find more dance music than abstract music, so to speak, yeah. uh, compared to um, to Asia. For yeah, example. Asia, for example. Yeah. Um, why I don't know. I still haven't got the answer. I get. I guess l many traditional music are based on on dancing, and the body is more involved. It's one of the things I think about, but it's not all traditional music. If you think about... Uh, no, no, but it's the relation, the, the purpose to exist for a music, maybe. I mean... Y yeah, no, but I mean, like, uh, if you uh, check uh, Pygmy songs, it's not uh, beat-oriented, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, for example. But if you check Tarab music, uh, or, uh, yeah, a, a lot of traditional music is beat-oriented in many parts of Africa, but it's not everywhere, but perhaps more than in many other parts of, uh, especially East, South, East Asia, I would say. Um, and the traditions are very different, of course. Because, um, for example, in, in East Asia, you've got court music from Japan, like Gagaku, which is uh, not uh, beat-oriented, yeah, for yeah. example. It's uh, classical music. Um, but yeah, there, there, there are there are many scenes for dance music, but it's often mainstream. I mean, to my taste, way too yeah, yeah. mainstream. And there are networks as well, like um, Kito. It's a um, Swahili East African network, a bit like MySpace. So artists p can upload their music and uh, offer it for free or for a fee. Um, and you have music genres and, and people can comment and listen, download, but it, and, and then it's, it's really African music oriented. Uh, mm -hmm. A bit of everything from, I think, yeah, R&B, so mm, Afro house and so on to more uh, electronic uh, or singeli hip hop and so on. Do you want to play us uh, another yeah, track? Yeah, we, we can play. I mean, we, we just spoke about Africa, but we go back to Asia. I mentioned Myanmar. It's a country that many people don't really know. And what they know about Myanmar is uh, the dictatorship and the coup and the violence and so on. But fortunately, it's not only about this. There are people um, uh, sort of resisting. So you've got a lot of punk music. 
um, a lot of hip hop, all these poetical, but you also have a small um, improvised and experimental music scene. Um, I'm going to play a trio. It's um, Pew Nin Twin, I'm sorry for the accent, uh, Crazy Eels Society, and uh, Ito. Ito, who is unfortunately in jail since the coup for uh, participating to demonstrations against uh, the government. He's also a um, drummer in a punk band over there. Um, so the piece is called uh, Zgr. So the track is over. <laughs> We've been a bit distracted, drinking some coffee and chatting. Um, so that was um, um, a trio from um, Yangon in Myanmar. It was a Pew Nin Twin, uh, but she lives in the Netherlands now. Um, but, but by the time she provided me the piece, she was still in Yangon. Uh, Crazy Eel Society and uh, Ito. Um, taken from Uchronia, a compilation um, that includes 32 artists and bands, no, um, 49 artists and bands from 32 Asian countries and the diaspora. Yeah, we shall we listen to another one or uh, yes, please. speak yeah, a yeah, bit sure. more? Um, so we could go, um, but play something a bit, uh, a bit longer maybe. Um, <laughs> Uh, let me check. I was thinking about something and now I forgot. Uh, gosh. <laughs> um, I can play my heartbeat while <laughs> you're looking for it. It's, it's there. So, yeah, th there, are, uh, th there are regions of the world where we... <laughs> Thank you. Um, we, we, we get uh, ve very little information, so or, or very bad information. If we speak about uh, Syria or Iraq, it's mostly it's the war and crazy terrorists. Um, if we speak about Central Asia, it's uh, we don't know anything about that place. <laughs> you know, uh, it's always like this, and I find it very sad because there are people also doing interesting art and, and music and, and other things there, um, and it's important for me to also um, uh, render them visible as much as possible and also create this, this network. Uh, like, I, I know that the, the musician that is from uh, um, Kyrgyzstan, 
on that compilation didn't know the guys I know in uh, Uzbekistan and it's next door so for me it's very important to to create this link because maybe one day or another they can meet and, and play together uh, especially that um, a musician from Kyrgyzstan organizes some uh, events sometimes and it's the same with um, in Iraq for example I've been there twice in uh, in the north in Iraqi Kurdistan and if everything works fine, I will go back next year and hopefully go to Baghdad also this time because I know people there. And when I went to um, Slimani and Erbil, I told my friend Hardy, the organizer, but I know people in Baghdad who do ambient and electronic music, techno. It would be nice if they could also perform or if you could go to Baghdad and exchange. Um, because of the, the bad image that the, the media provides, about those regions, or, or, or the lack of information. I mean, who speaks about um, Kyrgyzstan, <laughs> basically? Um, um, people don't, don't know and don't imagine that um, this kind of music also exists uh, there, and um, they do their own version of it. And for me, it's very important to, 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 to show um, so um, l let's maybe play um, a piece by Ali Al Saraf. Uh, he's uh, from um, Kuwait, another place where there is not so much happening due partly to restrictions. But it's not only this; it's also uh, like in the Gulf countries. It's very money-centered, so that people's priority is often not to do this kind of music because they are just. Uh, trying to make a living, not everybody is rich there, but also because lots of people are only there to make money and nothing else. So um, his piece is called um, Visa J98. Thank <laughs> you. 
So that was Ali Athraraf uh, from uh, Kuwait, um, a piece called Visa J98, taken from a compilation called Uchronia Experimental Electroacoustic Noise Improvised Music from the Middle East, Central, South, Southeast, East Asia. Yeah, so offline we spoke a tiny bit about Latin America. So yeah, so the le like, because m experimental music from Latin America I have the feeling is more well known probably than the African one and maybe even than the Asian one. Certainly than the Asian one too. Yeah. Depending on what country you speak about. If we speak about China, Japan, people yeah. know, but if we speak about uh, Thailand, no. Yeah, yeah. And you're right, it's better known, but it's parts of Latin America. Mm -hmm. Like people know a bit at least of what's going on in Mexico, Brazil. Argentina, Chile, but if we speak about Uruguay yeah, or, or Bolivia, Costa Rica yeah, or Bolivia, yeah, it's, yeah. it's all of a sudden much less in fine. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, we spoke a tiny bit about. Um, See, yeah, because you're going there in January. So yeah. what 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 what's the plan there? What's what I'm going to perform in a few cities in Mexico, Peru, and um, Colombia. So. Uh, Lima, Mexico City, and uh, Bogota, and um, Medellin, uh, maybe Trujillo, uh, Cuernavaca, and a few other ones, uh, festivals and independent uh, things. It's going to be my first time. And uh, uh, as you said, it's better known. It's also much better documented mm -hmm. in, in a way. I mean, especially compared to Africa. So there is Ricardo del Farra, a composer from Argentina, runs a database online with electroacoustic music from Latin America from the 1950s until today yeah, yeah. with lots of pieces and biographies and so on and it's not the only database there's also um, a database dedicated to women from Latin America Mujer, Mujeres que, uh, que, que experimentan con sonido Mm -hmm. It's called so uh, women who experiment with uh, sound. I'll make a, sh a small parenthesis. Dur just right after your talk during the festival, we will have a movie made by Dacio Pinedo about uh, Brazilian experimental music. Just to say, nice, no, it's amazing, and that's funny because I just prepared a Brazilian piece to finish the show ah, okay. as well. That ah. is that was published on my label as well. Okay. <laughs> Super, and so you will also meet, try to meet people there that you would like to eventually to to publish their work, or you have uh, plans of that kind? Uh, always, yeah. I'm, ah. I'm going also to half relax for once because I've been touring too much this year, but I absolutely want to meet people. There are some I know already, I mm -hmm. mean, that we met, we met uh, here in Europe. In Europe. Oh. Um, uh, but we are going to do collaborations and see what's going on and maybe record music. Uh, uh, no, definitely. I'm, I'm never really on holiday. I'm yeah, just yeah. <laughs> trying to always observe. I, even when I go somewhere else, if I go to Belgium and I've I meet somebody I find interesting, I also want to uh, 
uh, hear um, the music and see that live and the process and everything. It's always so. The you same you always me. travel also with a, a bit of equipment to be able to record. Mm. I always yeah yeah. Ah. Got a multi-track sound card okay. and uh, portable recorder, microphones. Uh, yeah yeah definitely. Do you know Vincent Moon? Yeah yeah we okay. met uh, we we met in uh, uh, the last time we met. Uh, gosh, where was that? We met somewhere in Asia. Just before the COVID, uh, well in Lebanon, we met at oh Irtijal. Yeah. So it was uh, oh this year, in fact, in April uh -huh. this year, he was uh, at Irtijal, the Free Improvised Music Festival. Yeah. Okay, because he, he the last years I think he was mostly living in Brazil, mm -hmm. and I don't know if he's still there. Uh. I think he's still, if I'm not wrong, uh, and still doing these. Yeah. Uh, performances and films yeah, yeah, yeah. with music yeah and, and his and label which is very good yeah and and the video are, i like them a lot yeah yeah definitely yeah, yeah. it's a very interesting person mm. <laughs> uh well we can well, uh, play okay. this track and yeah thanks thanks so much for coming and yeah. um we will uh we'll see you on the 10th of december for a lecture uh during our festival and well thanks a lot uh well thank great. you a lot too for inviting me uh here and at the festival and uh yeah we are going to play a piece by eduardo um now it's brazilian so it's not wrong eduardo <laughs> nespoli and adriano montero um two improvisers from brazil um the piece is drn uh, one uh, it's a long piece, so we don't need to play the full thing, but then we have time to switch. <laughs> All right, so enjoy that. Um, and, uh, well, see you at the festival, hopefully.
Okay, we have a very, very short break, and then we will have our next guest. Surprise. It's like one minute break, maximum. <laughs> 